Okay, welcome to theCUBE, everyone. This is the Cube Conversation here in Palo Alto, California, theCUBE Studios. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, co-host theCUBE. I'm here with Ying Lan Chi. She's the co-founder and CEO of Datavisor, an entrepreneur, former Microsoft researcher. Thanks for joining me in CUBE Conversation. It's my great pleasure to be here. So I'm excited to, um, to chat with you because you've got a really hot company in a very hot space, but also as an entrepreneur, you're out competing against a huge wave of transformation. You've got the big clouds out there, you've got IT enterprises moving to some sort of oper cloud operating model. You have global IoT market, huge security problem. You guys are trying to solve that with Datavisor, your company. Um, so, so take me through the journey. For first, take a minute to explain what Datavisor is, then I want to ask you about how you got into this business, how it started. So tell, take, what does Datavisor do? First, give a one minute overview of the company. Sure, so Datavisor is a company that uses AI, machine learning, and big data, trying to detect and prevent a variety of fraud and abuse problems for all these consumer-facing enterprises. So our mission is to really leverage these advanced technology that you talk about in many of these, and uh, to help these um, consumer-facing enterprise to uh, establish and restore trust to the end users like uh, um, you and me, like every one of us. You know, cybersecurity and security in general is a global issue. And, and I mean, spear phishing is just so effective. You can just come in and just send someone a LinkedIn message or an email, they click on a link and you're done. It's not much technology, these people are struggling with this, but you guys have a unique approach mm -hmm. that you're taking with Datavisor. Um, so I want to dig into it, but first, how did it all start? Was when you started this company with your co-founder, did you just wake up one day and say, you know what, we're going to go solve the security problems for the world. Did it come, where, where did it, where'd the idea come from and how did it all start? So I would say it's probably like sort of, if you, if you look at the background of me and my co-founder, it's probably the natural journey to it because uh, we actually came from like research and academia background and been spending seven years at Microsoft Research Silicon Valley before starting Datavisor. And there, when we joined, like 2006, actually uh, it was where we uh, kind of just see this parallel computing paradigm, like MapReduce paper just got published and all the data is available. We have all these security problems and that time we're partnering with a number of large uh, consumer facing groups in Microsoft and um, to see how we can use this big data to solve some of the challenges that they, feel, uh, they face in terms of, for example, the online fraud and abuse. And um, also we see the industry and was rapidly getting into the digital era where we have like billions of users online. Yeah. So everybody see this unique challenge if they have a variety of vulnerabilities they face. They're trying to bring more rich features to users, but at the same time, they see new fraud coming up uh, uh, also like sort of very rapidly. So everybody's, when they see new fraud, they're trying to have a point solutions where they say, let's just tackle this. Yeah. But then afterwards, there's another fraud or another abuse coming up. And Throw so another those tool out. And build so another tool. <laughs> exactly. Buy another tool. Kind of arms race, right? <laughs> Always being yeah. kind of a little bit reactive in the catching it in a cat and mouse game. So we decided that, well, let's just come to see whether we can build something different and leverage like AI machine learning. And then we see like what this new kind of cloud computing, big data infrastructure can do. Mm -hmm. So let's build something a little bit more proactive so that uh, we've been in the security area for so long that we feel something fundamental that can be game changer is only when we don't make assumptions to say what, we at, what kind of attack we want to detect, but be a little bit more open to say, let's try to build something more robust and uh, can have the ability to automatically discover and detect these like new type of unknown attacks in a more proactive way. You know, Inkland, I want to talk about that point about your time at Microsoft. At that time around 2006, I think it's notable because the environment of Microsoft's scale was massive. They were powering, the browsers were everywhere, MSN, the online services that Microsoft had were certainly large scale, but they were built on what I would call Gen 1 internet technology, databases, you know, big, large scale. At that time, they're the new entrance, Facebook, 
um, of the world, yeah. they were building all, all their own tech. So you had kind of the new entrant who had a clean sheet of paper and they built their own large scale. We know what the history of that, those kinds of companies um, that were natively at that time. That's the environment that Microsoft had that a lot of customers today have. They have technologies that are, have been around, mm -hmm. they have to transform very quickly. So when you learned about some of those data collection capabilities at scale mm -hmm. of older technologies and rushing to a newer solution, this is a problem that a lot of end user enterprises have. CIOs, cloud architects, mm -hmm. data architects, and they've been operating data warehouses for generations. Big fenced off databases, mm -hmm. slow, big data lakes turning into swamps. So that's the current situation. How do you guys speak to that? Because this is the number one challenge we see, is I have all this data, I got a data problem. I'm now full of data, I'm being taken advantage of with the fraud, whether it's spear phishing or some other scams that are going on with email and all this stuff happening. How do you guys talk to that, 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 that customer, that environment? You're definitely very spot on of the challenges and problems that everyone face. So, um, while we get into the digital era, everybody has this great sense of trying to collect data and store those data. So that has been like the amount of data we collect is uh, tremendous nowadays. The next step everybody was looking at the big challenge for us is how to make value of these in a more effective way. And uh, we also talk about like lately a lot on this AI and machine learning, those type of uh, newer technology, how they can transform some of the way we do things in the past. Like how uh, the, the analogy we know is uh, how do we go from the manual driving cars to the self-driving like era of having all the automation and intelligence making value out of this. So there are still a lot of challenges that you definitely touch upon. First of all, when they have the data there, uh, does that mean we have the data, we have the data in a consistent, consolidated way? Many times, still different uh, divisions, department collecting data, they're still in silo mode. So how to bring the data together. And second is that we have the data, we have the computing power, how do we bring the algorithm that operate uh, on top of that the framework to have a system that would let the algorithm like a sort of generating values like us, for example, in the fraud detection like space, be able to automatically process huge amount of data and make decisions in real time instantly of detecting these new type of attacks. So we find that's a problem beyond the, the, the silo of we say just IT problem and or just a data science problem or just a business problem. So many times these three groups still like sort of work separately but in the end we need the domain knowledge, we need building a system and um, we need a good data architecture to solve them together. So that's where DataVisor is building a kind of a, a solution, the ecosystem to, to consider all of this. Okay, so let's talk about the ecosystem a little bit later. I want to get to the algorithm piece, because I think that, that seems to be your secret sauce, right? The algorithms? Is that where the action is for you guys? The secret algorithms, or is it the setup and the environment first? I mean, it kind of makes sense. You got to set the table first, get the data unified or addressable and then apply software algorithms to them. That's essentially so the, the I would AI say the What's your secret sauce? Yeah, so that's, that's a good question. A lot of our customers ask us the same question. Is algorithm your secret sauce? And then my answer is kind of partially yes, but also at the same time, not completely. Because uh, we are all catching up very rapidly in algorithms. If you look at the new algorithm being published every year, there's a lot of great ideas out there, great algorithm there. And uh, so our unique algorithm in this uh, differentiating technology is called unsupervised machine learning, where uh, so unsupervised means we don't need to require customers to have historical loss experience or need to know uh, the training labels of what past attacks to look like. So to proactively uh, discover new type of unknown type of attacks in an automated way. So that's what the algorithm part is and it has its And by merit. the way, if people were, want to know about the difference between supervised and unsupervised machine learning, you go Google search, there's some papers out there, but I think um, if you, most people might know this or might not know, it's really hard to do unsupervised machine learning because supervised, you just tell it what to look for, yeah. it finds it, unsupervised is saying, be ready for anything. Basically, exactly, so it, exactly, unsupervised means we want to make decisions without assumptions and we want to be able to discover those 
patterns as the attackers evolve and be very adaptive. So that's definitely a great idea out there. I wouldn't say like if you Google like search unsupervised and you would find um, so um, in academia draw publish like ours about it, etc. And uh, so I wouldn't say it's a completely new concept. It's a concept yeah. out there. And but if you look it's at it's been the around for a while, but the, the compute is the value because that's right. now you have the compu computation to accelerate all those <laughs> calculations required that we used to be stalling it in ten, from ten years ago. I mean, it's been around for a couple of, a couple of decades, uh, AI and machine learning, that's but right. it's been computa computation intensive. Very much so, very much so. So if you look at the so sort of the gap where like sort of is from, for example, the academia side of the world, the algorithm to where it's working, it is uh, something similar to deep learning requires a lot more like a computation complexity compared to the uh, past algorithm. Okay, that Ingling, we've been I got to ask on. you because this is the, this comes up. Now let's get back to the reality of the customer because so I lack and geek out on this all day long. I love the conversation. Uh, we should certainly do a follow up on deep dive with, with our team. But the reality is customers have been con um, consolidating and outsourcing IT for generations. And just only a few years ago that they wake up and some woke up earlier than others and said, wow, I have no intellectual property, I have no competitive advantage, my IT is all outsourced. I am getting killed with requests for top line revenue growth and I'm getting killed with security breaches and where's my IT staff? So they don't have the luxury of just turning on a machine learning. Hey, give me some machine learning guys and solve the problem. That's really hard to set up. You got to kind of build a trajectory with economies of scale in IT. This is a huge problem. How do you work with companies that just say, look, I got security problems, but I don't have time or the capability to hire machine learning people because that's an aspiration that's not viable, not attainable. What do you say to the customers? That are you, can you still work with those customers? Are you a good fit for that kind of environment? Talk, talk about that dynamic, because that seems to happen a lot. Yeah, so um, so in, in that area, like sort of you really want to bring to the customer a solution that solves their problem, not uh, um, like us today, we have a lot of like sort of uh, um, infrastructure capability, like platforms where they can leverage, but you definitely talk about the challenge they face. They don't have people to leverage those underlying primitives and build something that immediately address their business Can challenges. Can you build it for them? And uh, that's where Datavisor okay, is, geez. to provide the platform and the service to the customers where we take data in and tell them directly mm -hmm. on the kind of the type of attacks they face in real time, constantly, all the time. I really want to get your opinion on something I've been talking about publicly lately and I've been um, interviewing folks in the industry about it because you know, if you look at um, the graphics market with around AI, NVIDIA has been doing very, very well. They broke into gaming, obviously mm -hmm. it's vertical and then they've been using the graphics cards for blockchain mining. And then, so NVIDIA kind of walked into these new markets because they had a general, not general, mm -hmm. a, a purpose-built um, processor for floating point and graphic mm -hmm. stuff that was very specialized, but now becomes very popular. We're seeing the need for something around data where you have, you want to have agility, but you also want high performance. So people are making trade-offs between agility and high performance, and if you ask anyone, they'll tell you that, I'd love to have more performance in data, and so there's no NVIDIA yet that has come out and become the NVIDIA of data. There's no, been, there's no data processing unit out mm -hmm. there yet. This is something that we, ha we see a need for. So kind of your, what you're talking about here is customers have all these demands, it's almost like they need an, like a, a data processing unit. No, and they need, what they need is a solution. Like you said, uh, when they have a business solution, they're not looking at uh, something like a generic framework or generic paradigm. They're looking at something that tackle the specific need. Like we're, we're talking about, for example, when we talk about fraud prevention, we're talking about we're building a service the ecosystem that combines the data element, combines the algorithm that address their problem right away. So that's where we're talking about and with your analogy of the NVIDIA, they want something almost like that chip directly solve their pain point. And that's what you guys are kind of doing because what I, if, I, if I get this right, you guys have the kind of horizontal view of data, but you're going very vertically and specializing on the vertical markets because that's where the, the need for the acute nature of the algorithms to be successful, like say financial services. Am I getting that right? So it's like horizontally scalable data, but very specialized 
purpose. Exactly. So horizontally scalable data, but then really mine the data and build the algorithms that optimize for the detection of these unknown type of fraud in this area. Because they're and customized. I mean, they have this certain techniques that the financial guys will use to attack the banks. Right? Is it, so that's kind of like that you have to be really nimble and agile at the application level. Right, so when we build the algorithm, we have in the mind the specific application we need to target. So you don't want to be over general in the sense that it can do anything, yeah. but in the end, it does nothing super, super well. So if we are solving that particular yeah. like sort of fraud detection problem, in the end, it needs to be, everything needs to be optimized. Yeah. The integration with data, the algorithm, the output, the integration with the customer needs to optimize for that scenario. In the long run, can it be even generalized? You can talk about the agility and the nimbleness to broaden out to other areas. Mm -hmm. Then I would say like we are taking approach, I would love to see, for example, NVIDIA's approach gradually then expanding to other verticals that is something we're looking from the long-term perspective. But anytime, our view is that we are a layer above all the cloud computing, the data layer. We are the layer that is verticalized positioned and targeted into, to solve this specific business issues. And we want to do that really well, mm -hmm. solve that problem one, once at time. And then leverage an the algorithm, the underlying infrastructure we build to see mm -hmm. whether we can expand that to other verticals, other scenarios. So you don't get dependent upon the cloud players. You actually will draft off their success. So we Is leverage uh, cloud computing era aggressively. Yeah. Uh, who doesn't like yeah. sort of in, in this in this scenario that definitely bring the scale, the agility, and the flexibility to expand. And there's a lot of great technology. What there. do you think so about the cloud players? So obviously too. customers that you have, I want to get into that thing, but when you look at the multiple clouds, multiple clouds and hybrid cloud are is a trend happening right now. What's your opinion of how that's going? Um, that comes up a lot. CIO's number yes. one challenge is cloud architects, um, and then data architects are all kind of like working as kind of the new personas we're seeing. How is the cloud um, and multi-cloud or single cloud approach uh, for your customers? How do you see that evolving? Because we see trends where, for instance, the Department of yeah, Defense yeah. is probably going to go all in on Amazon. That's a single cloud solution, but it wasn't sourced as a single cloud. It just turns out that Amazon was better for that. Um, but they'll probably win. Everyone's kind of talking about that. But versus spreading things around to multiple clouds. So it's a trade-off. What's your thoughts on that as a, as, a, as a technologist? Well, you touched upon an interesting point because uh, we actually, our position is multi-cloud. Multi-cloud as well as we support even like on-premise deployment. And I'll talk about the, the reason why the cloud is such big space and we see different players there. We de definitely see like different players because of, uh, for example, their historical kind of, for example, working with different kind of vendors, as well as their development, you definitely see. And uh, um, so from, actually, uh, our position in, in this space was uh, literally driven by the customer need. From that, what we saw is customers have these requirements of, for example, their favorite cloud environment. And then there's this, uh, public cloud versus private cloud, right? We're not completely there to say yeah. one cloud that rules all. And then you also see some very conservative areas, particularly financial services, uh, where data security is really somebody like sort of still, like sort of really their, their top priority, they're conservative. Yeah. And from that perspective, they still uh, are having on-premise solutions. And we have to be considerate of all of these different kind of requirements. And also when we look at the involvement, right, we also see different geographic landscapes have different kind mm. of uh, uh, sort of the cloud deployment landscape as well. And, and it's, it's, it's a dynamic environment. And it's a um, new dynamic. It's a new dynamic, it's a new especially dynamic. the global component, the regions. Exactly, the regions and the different regions. Now we also have a GDPR where there's a data residence problem. So that yeah. also makes it also challenging to say just deploy your solution on one type of cloud and that's very rigid model. And uh, um, so definitely from very early days, we, base, uh, we basically decide our data decision would be we are going to support multi-cloud very early yeah, on. It makes sense because people don't want to move a lot of data around. They're going to want to have data in multiple clouds if that's where the app is. Um, the latency and the threats mm -hmm. around moving packets from point A to point B are, is a risk too, not simply in latency, but 
you know, hacks. All right, so great, I'm very impressed with your, your vision, very impressed with what you guys are doing. I think it's very relevant. Talk about the business. What are you guys at in terms of customers? What kind of customers do you have? How many customers? Can you talk about some of the, the, um, the metrics? Right. How many yeah. customers do you have? What kind of customers? What are they doing with you? What are some of the successes? Can you lay out some of the use cases? Yeah, so we work with uh, uh, many of the largest enterprises in the world, and um, so they probably also like sort of uh, uh, are the ones that uh, face a lot of challenge of these large scale fraud at the same time, and they are the ones also aggressively moving forward in adopting new technology solutions. They're a little bit more kind of the the earlier kind of pioneering kind of adopters. So. Um, our customer can be in three verticals today, like so we take a vertical approach. The first is l those large social commerce like sector mm -hmm. and um, some of our customers, for example, include, for example, Yelp, Pinterest kind of uh, customers. And there is also the second uh, vertical is those mobile app and uh, where a lot of, there's a lot of fraudulent mm -hmm. installs uh, where uh, these mobile apps and we're trying to acquire users aggressively everywhere, but among the users acquired those installs, there can be substantial amount that is fraudulent. So those are the separate like sort of a segment we target. Mm -hmm. And the third segment uh, we talk about, you mentioned is the financial yeah. area where traditionally people focus a lot on kind of the risk control, the fraud detection, definitely constantly being problem. Their challenge is when they move from the the past like existing like sort of um, area now to the digital area going online and um, a lot of new attacks that are coming up and definitely huge challenge problem for them as well. So you guys have some great funding, some great investors, uh, NEA, New, new Enterprise Associates and Sequoia Capital. Um, what's the growth plan for you? What's the, what's the goal for the company? What's your growth strategy? What's on your mind now? Hiring obviously, um, customer, what's the focus? What's the growth plan? So our focus is uh, um, we we we've been working with many of these large service providers. Uh, as we mentioned our large like enterprise customers. So globally today, we've already been protecting over kind of a four billion kind of um, end user like accounts like in total. So it's a lot of users um, this moment for our next step growth. And uh, so we have like sort of uh, two kind of thoughts. A is uh, um, we want to basically. Um, make it the, the 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 service even more scalable and even more kind of standardized in the sense that we can work more than just the largest ones and be able to make it convenient mm -hmm. to be integrated with um, as many, for example, consumer facing kind of these providers to expand possible the to the expand the, 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 the breadth basic yeah. of the customers that we work with. The second aspect is we're looking at the fraud detection. We feel in traditionally when the fraud market is segmented, we talk about when it in the offline world and you would see financial sector fraud very different from, for example, somebody working on content. Now it's become consolidated. So in that area, we're trying to build a more kind of holistic kind of ecosystem where, for example, the device side of solutions and the analytical solutions can be consolidated together to make it an ecosystem where we can basically um, have both sides of views and being able to uh, provide to our customers different kind of needs. And in the past, it was very point solutions. You would see kind of a data signal like so the providers, then you would see some algorithm providers and focusing on specific type of fraud. And we wanted to make an ecosystem so that uh, uh, to, to your point in the past on the data, we will be able to connect the data, look at the user at account level and be able to detect a variety type of fraud as for example, uh, the uh, enterprises are pushing on new features and the new flavors mm -hmm. of these type of. Um, and the ecosystem will, participants will look like what? Um, ad networks, data sources, who's in the ecosystem that you want to build? Yeah, so that's a great question. In an ecosystem we talk about, for example, cloud providers can be an ecosystem. Well, 
basically they actually power the, the computation kind of the, the layer of all the, the resource there. And we can also partner with data partners. That's another important element. So you're looking at the technology data yeah. system all integrate together. At the same time, we all can also look at, for example, the uh, consulting firms that bring a bigger solution to the customers with the fraud being important component that they want to address, a system integrators. And uh, um, so all of these can fit together. And even for example, the, some of the underlying, for example, the algorithm solutions in the end can be plugged into the <laughs> ecosystem yeah. to provide different aspects of views and make make value out of data. Yeah. And uh, so that different algorithms work together. and. Um, become a better kind of defense area. Yeah. It's like a security first strategy. We heard first we had cloud first, data first, <laughs> now security <laughs> first. Right. I mean, got to have the security. Well, I really appreciate it. We need, we need more algorithms to police the algorithms. The algorithms for algorithms. So maybe that's next for <laughs> you guys. Well, well with, the, with the business goal in mind, right? We, we always take a, a kind of open, holistic view. Like, uh, I like you were talking about security first. When we look at this, how to solve that problem more effectively, then we are very open-minded to say, yeah. what is best combinations we want to be there ultimately. And that's a single bit of real-time instant decision. That is important at that time because that matters with good users' friction they face, whether we can be able to accurately detect attackers. So we're all optimizing for that. And then all the underlying data consolidation piece, the algorithm, like sort of a combination working with each other, is just to make the barrier high, make it difficult for the attackers, and to make all of us good users easier. Well, you're doing amazing things, and I think you're right. There's, there's value in that data, new ways to use that data for better security. It's just the beginning, the, this is just the beginning of this new trend. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming in and sharing your insights and congratulations on a great startup and good luck to you and your co-founder. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, yeah, great uh, to have this conversation. I'm here in the Cube studios in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier for Cube Conversations with a hot startup, Datavisor Inc., England Sheik, CEO and co-founder. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.